Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. You're at the Three Village Historical Society this morning, and it was founded in 1964, and it's primarily here um, to foster and promote the study, research, and education of local history. We've got two exhibits. Uh, one is the Sailing Circle, uh, but our latest exhibit is called Spies. How a group of ordinary citizens assisted George Washington um, by serving him as spies during the American Revolution. Many people don't realize that the British occupied Long Island. Um, and honestly, many scholars do believe, and, and we agree, that if it wasn't for this spy ring, perhaps the war could have taken a completely different turn. In 1776, New York was ill-prepared to repel any kind of a British invasion. Washington recognized that he had been outflanked and was able to evacuate his troops, leaving the British in control of New York City. This necessitated the formation of aspiring to find out what the British were up to in New York City. And that was the cult of spying. George Washington's spying activities began with sending Nathan Hale to Long Island. Nathan Hale was not an effective spy, uh, primarily because he was found out very quickly and captured. Uh, he ultimately was hung up over in Huntington. After this, at this event, Washington realized that he needed a more sophisticated type of spy activity and uh, approached Benjamin Talmadge to organize the spy ring here on Long Island that ultimately became known as the Culper Spy Ring or the Setauket Spy Ring. Stony Brook University has in its possession a letter that the Three Village Historical Society was intimately involved in acquiring. And in that letter, the, uh, Washington explains uh, how to encrypt messages. He explains uh, how to conceal the encrypted message. Uh, he wants them put into journals. He wants them in invisible ink. He wants them on blank pages, uh, in, in reams of paper, in different ways. So Washington himself was intimately involved in the operations of the spy ring. Robert Townsend was the New York operative. The newspaper that Townsend worked for was Rivington's Gazette. And because of its ostensible Tory sympathies, he was able to get into taverns and uh, informal meetings of British officers and was able to obtain from them information about where they had been and where they anticipated they were going. Nathaniel Rowe, the local tavern keeper, was the agent that primarily rode to New York City and brought the information back to Setauket. Uh, Caleb Brewster then took the information across Long Island Sound and ultimately into Connecticut to Talmadge and then eventually to George Washington. West Point is a key location in the Hudson River. Ships had to tack and change direction as they went around the point, and so the capture of West Point would have been disastrous to the Patriot cause. In 1790, Washington came out to Setauket, spent a day at the Road Tavern, and actually met with the participants in the spy ring. This particular panel shows the location of the various participants in the spy ring. Right on Setauket Harbor was the birthplace of Benjamin Talmadge. During the spy ring years, he was over in Connecticut. In East Setauket, right on what's now Route 25A, was the location of the Rowe Tavern. This exhibit here, Spies, was actually quite a few years in the making. Uh, we did a lot of historical research. It was incredible that it actually did work and that they were not caught the spies. Uh, the kids loved the sense of drama. 
uh, and to know that this is a, almost uh, an action-packed event that took place right here, right, right in their own backyard.